Hi, I am Mirko Böhm, an authorized Qt trainer from KDAB. Welcome to this learning video based on the material for the Qt Essentials training course. With these videos, we'll be giving you key insights into Qt. We will also demonstrate the type of in-depth training available in the classroom-based Qt Essentials training course. In this video, we're going to introduce you to Qt Creator. In previous videos, we have talked about QMake and while it's interesting and important to understand how QMake works and how you build Qt-based software on different platforms, it's not something that you want to do every day. So Qt Creator provides an automated way to deal with the project files needed to build your software and many other things that make the life of the developer easier day to day. First of all, Qt Creator is your editor. You will use it to write your C++ source code, but it also integrates the form designer for you to create your dialogues or your widgets that you have to have in your project. It does automate the task of dealing with the project files, so you don't have to edit the project files manually and add and delete the C++ and header files from it. It integrates help, so you can easily look up the documentation and the references to classes of Qt that you're using. And it integrates a debugger uh, that allows you on all the different platforms that it supports to inspect the Qt variables in your program. The cross-platform aspect is probably the biggest advantage of using Qt Creator. Um, as a developer, you will have to learn only one way of dealing with your IDE. And this will be the same way, um, depend, no matter on what platform you are developing at the moment. Even the debugger support is pretty much the same on all the different platforms. That's a very convenient situation, especially because it allows you to inspect internals of Qt objects in a very convenient way. In this slide, you see a screenshot of an open Qt Creator session. The main components are, of course, the source window, which is also the biggest part. But there's also the sidebar that allows you to inspect your projects and open other files. There's a mode selector. The mode selector switches between different views or perspectives to Qt Creator. So there's a different view to debug your source code compared to editing the source code or to managing your projects. There's a quick open bar that allows you to quickly find files or classes or methods or other things that you can reference in your project. There are a couple of output panes that collect the output of your application when it's running, the output of the build tool or the compiler, and also the issues with your source code, for example, compiled errors. These are usually hidden, so you have access to them using shortcuts, alt, one, two, three, four. And um, that's a very convenient way to look at this because you're usually not, not concerned with these kind of, um, this kind of information. Um, it's only relevant to you when you're looking at an error, for example. The code locator is a convenient feature of Qt Creator. It simplifies many tasks that you have to do during editing your code, like finding another source file. It uses shortcuts to reference certain aspects of your project. For example, you can say, L and then a line number to go to a certain line in your currently edited file. Or you can say P and then a file name to search for any kind of file with that name in your current project. You access the locator using Control K and if you get used to this you will find yourself just navigating through your project using this shortcut and then one of the different um, modes of searching your project using the code locator. You debug your application by hitting the F5 function key. If you do that, the application will start in debug mode and it allows you to set breakpoints anywhere in the application to stop and to inspect the variables. This works the same way in all the different platforms. If you're familiar with cross-platform software development, you will know that debugging is one of the topics that is very diverse in the different platforms and very hard to do. And with Qt Creator, it's the same way everywhere. When you start your application in debug mode in Qt Creator, Qt Creator will switch to the debug view. This will be slightly different than the ed ed uh, regular editing view. You will see three major screens. One of them is the source code. You need that to set breakpoints or after you interrupted your program, step through the program line by line. Another one is the call stack. The call stack shows you how your program got to the point where you interrupted it. And it allows you to walk up this call stack and see different variables that are defined on the way to where your program is currently. And to the right of the call stack, you'll find a variable inspector that allows you to even drill into objects that are uh, instance of Qt classes and see their properties. You'll also be able to look at breakpoints or the threats that are defined in your program. 
I will now show you how to create the same Hello World project that we have used earlier in Qt Creator and display a couple of the features and more convenient ways to deal with Qt projects in Qt Creator. We are creating a new file, a new project. We'll be using an empty Qt4 project and we call it Hello World. We have to select an existing directory and Qt Creator will ask us if it should add a project file to this project. Yes, we want to do that. We can ignore for now the um, other buttons in this dialog. And now we have we've got a project file for our Hello World project. It's empty so far because that's what we told Qt Creator to do. Um, instead of adding a file here now, we will add another C++ file to this project. Our main.cpp source file. If we now check the Add to Project button, then um, this file will be added to the project file. And the project file will contain it now. You see it right here. So I kind of promised that you will not be concerned with editing these project files manually anymore. And you see here how Qt Creator automates that task. We're now going to add the same kind of source code, same source code that we have used in, the, in previous videos to um, Hello World. So looking at um, we're going to include our header and you see here that there is code completion it's a, it uh, Qt Creator suggests the header files that you can um, include in the application and this is a feature that nicely works on all the different platforms so you're getting the same convenience no matter where you work um, you remember that we have to create a Q application object. And um, there's a shortcut control space to get code completion. And you see here that the Q application class is now known. Q application gets the argument count and the argument vector of the application, processes them to see arguments that all Qt applications understand. We wanted to create a Q push button. See, in this case, a pointer to a push button, and we create it with new. The argument for the push button constructor was the text we want to show. I'm going to hide the sidebar now so that you can um, see all the code. We have to show the button. You might want to remember, might remember that. If we don't show the button, it won't be visible. You see code completion here at work. And then the return statement. Okay, this is our complete Hello World application. And we're now going to run it. And when we run it, we want it to stop at this line. Um, all we have to do is hit F5. It will build the program and run it too. You see that you, the output of the compile process is not shown by default. You can get to it by clicking on these panes down here. So here you see what Qt Creator is doing in the background to um, compile your application. If there is application output, you can see that here as well. Our application doesn't really output anything. You can hide that again by closing the compile output pane. Um, you see that our program has stopped in line 7 where we set a breakpoint and we're now able to inspect the variables in the program using the locals and watchers pane over here. Our button has been created and uh, we can now advance either line by line or just continue the program. To advance by line, I hit F10, it should go to line 8 and stop again. And now I could um, inspect changes to the button object. Um, to continue, you hit F5 again, just like when you start the application, and that should now show the application on the screen and continue in that line 8 until I close the window. Oh, where is it? There. There's our program. This is Hello World um, in Qt, running from within Qt Creator in a debug session. I close the program and that makes the application 
exit in a regular way. In this little demo you've seen Qt Creator in action, we have created a new project and we um, compiled and ran it from within Qt Creator. We used Qt Creator's debugging facilities. When you create a new project in Qt Creator, you will be asked for which Qt modules you want to link in your application. And you might have noticed that there's a long list of modules that you can choose from. Um, the list is very extensive. It includes um, SQL or SVG or WebKit or Graphics View. So there are high-level modules that um, offer a lot of functionality for your application. If you want to get an overview of what these modules can do uh, in your application, what you can use them for, one good way is to look at the Qt demo program. Qt demo program integrates all the different examples that come with Qt, and you can look at them and see what kind of graphical user interfaces you can program with them. We're going to show you the Qt demo and um, just an exemplary example to look at. So here you see the Qt demo program already running and has the categorized examples that come with Qt on the left side. And just to give you an idea, we'll be looking at the animation framework and there's the Stickman program. And from within the demo, you can launch the applicative program and I can get it on the screen here. And now we can make the Stickman dance by pressing the D button. This is an example for the um, state machine framework for animations that comes with Qt. So this video showed you how to create a Hello World application using Qt Creator. And that also brings us to the end of the Qt Fundamentals module of these videos. We hope that you enjoyed this taste of the Qt Essentials training. For the full experience, including labs, Q&As and additional information, we recommend that you attend the full multi-day Qt Essentials training course. The course is available from KDAB or any of the other Qt training partners. For full information, check out qt.nocare.com. Thanks for watching.